A relationship with someone with borderline personality disorder, or BPD for short, can be very taxing and even abusive depending on the severity of the disorder, whether there are co-occurring disorders, and whether or not they are receiving treatment for BPD. Now, I'm not suggesting that anyone stay in a toxic relationship but I often get questions from men who want to know how they can respond better to their BPD partner's behavior, how they can learn to manage themselves through the ups and downs, and what they can do to support her better. I realize that some people have had very destructive relationships with a borderline partner, but keep in mind that this is not the same across the board. This disorder is on a continuum from mild to severe, and people can often learn to manage their symptoms and have healthier relationships with treatment. That said, if she's not willing to accept her diagnosis or treatment, or if you're dealing with psychopathy, narcissism, uh, antisocial personality disorder, rather than borderline, there will be no happy ending. I'm Lise LeBlanc and in today's video I will give you 10 do's and don'ts when it comes to being in a relationship with someone with BPD. Remember, these strategies won't work perfectly um, or all of the time, but I hope they will help you deal with the challenges that come with having a BPD partner. Okay, so number one, understand that BPD is an illness that changes the person's perceptions, cognitions, behaviors, memory. It can cause episodes of neurosis, um, periods of dissociation, impulsivity, intense rage, depression. It can even drive the person to want to hurt themselves or even kill themselves. It can cause them to see you as a threat and attack you. So learn about BPD and try to understand that although they can have periods of stability, they can sometimes mask their symptoms and appear near normal, they are not neurotypical. They have a different operating system. And there is more and more research revealing the neurological underpinnings of BPD. That said, BPD is not all of who they are. Like everyone else, they have unique strengths talents, gifts. So treat them like an individual. Number two, now that you are looking at your partner through a BPD lens, you know that they can easily get emotionally dysregulated. So start noticing the signs when you see that they are getting dysregulated and quickly put up an emotional shield because what comes next probably won't be pretty. It will be unfiltered. It could even be abusive. In this moment, they are projecting negative perceptions, intense negative emotions, and beliefs onto you. Don't take it personally, even though they are making it as personal and cutting as possible. And they may or may not mean what they're saying, but they're likely going to regret the manner in which they are delivering it. Um, after it's over, they may apologize, they may do nice things to compensate for their behavior, or they may go back to idealizing you. But keep in mind that when they are idealizing you, they are also in a dysregulated state. So it's best not to take too much of that in either. Even though it makes you feel good, even though it feeds your ego, it's best to shield yourself from both extremes and to stay off the roller coaster as much as possible. So remember that whether they are projecting from an intensely positive or negative state, it's not so much a reflection of you or how they think and feel about you overall, but a projection of what's going on inside of them in that moment. As an analogy, think of a time when you were falling in love and you had rose colored glasses on Everything the person did was so cute and sweet, you could easily overlook any of their faults. Now, think of someone you seriously can't stand and how everything they say and do is irritating. Any positive gestures are seen suspiciously through a dark lens. Now, amplify these two states, falling in love and hating someone by a thousand, and then imagine viewing your partner through these two completely opposing lenses, 
depending on your ever shifting emotional states, which you can't control. So just know that when your partner is splitting, it's a symptom of their disorder and a reflection of their own psychological state. And it's not actually about you. Number three, just as important as recognizing when the person with BPD is emotionally dysregulated is noticing when you are dysregulated. No one has a nervous system made of steel. So don't be too hard on yourself if your shield is not strong enough and your stress response gets activated. Know your own triggers and how you react when you are going into fight, flight, freeze, or fawn mode and have a plan on how to handle these situations. I recommend creating this plan with your partner while you're both emotionally regulated and think and talk about how you will respond to symptom flare-ups and BPD episodes. But don't expect the person with BPD to be the one to follow the plan um, once they're triggered. You will be the one that needs to implement it um, but at least there will be a small part of her that knows what's going on and why you're doing what you're doing. Now, if your nervous system is very sensitive, uh, if you have an insecure attachment style or your own mental health issues, it will be very difficult to manage this relationship, maybe impossible. And it would help if you were both receiving treatment in this case. Number four, while they're dysregulated, they are going to misperceive and misinterpret much of what you say and do. For example, you may be speaking in a normal tone and they will ask why you are yelling at them while they are yelling at you. You may ask a question and they will accuse you of always accusing them. At this point, their ability to perceive, interpret, remember, rationalize is seriously, seriously compromised. They feel threatened and in their mind, it's somehow your fault. And even if they know that you're not to blame, they may not be able to counter the tricks that their brain is playing on them. So stay super ultra calm, dodge all bullets, and just do your best to let all the emotional hooks go by. During this time, keep what you say to a minimum and your words and your instructions must be very, very simple and clear. Use a calm, assertive tone and safe body language. Don't cross your arms, furrow your eyebrows, frown, and don't make any sudden movements. Just remain firm and hold your boundaries. Number five, there are times when leaving the situation may be the only safe option. If she's lost control and things are getting out of hand, inform her that you are taking a break and reassure her that you will be back. She may start begging you not to leave. She may tell you to F off and never come back. Assertively repeat that you both need time to process things and that you will be back soon. Don't wait for permission to leave. Just go. But keep in mind that you leaving the situation may trigger her fears of abandonment and depending on the severity of her illness may exacerbate her symptoms. So do check in on her. If she's in danger, get help. Number six, modify the environment, reduce sensory stimulation and increase safe and positive sensory cues in the environment. This can include images that elicit positive memories, scents that are associated with safety, relaxing music, anything that is calming and soothing to the nervous system is helpful. For more on this, um, just click on the link above. Number seven, make other positive lifestyle changes. Reduce or eliminate coffee, alcohol, sugar, increase exercise, make healthy dietary changes. Consider consulting a naturopath to find out if there are any ways to naturally optimize health and well-being. Number eight, incorporate positive routines, including meditation, yoga, and cognitive tasks such as puzzles, crosswords, and anything that involves activating the logical side of the brain. Um, this can help deactivate the overly active emotional side. Obviously, this won't always work. 
if you are with someone with BPD, you know that their dysregulation can happen very, very quickly and can last for hours, even days. They may be antagonistic during these times, depressed, dissociated, acting out, and this may make them completely unreceptive to any suggestions you may make. Number nine, if at all possible, attend DBT skills groups together. These groups are held online They're and they can help you both deal with the challenges of BPD. Number 10, think about what you want, need, value, what's important for your psychological well-being. Learn to take care of yourself, even if it sometimes means triggering your partner with BPD. It's important that you get through the fear of upsetting them. The fact of the matter is that they will get triggered and dysregulated at times. That's just part of this disorder. So no matter what you do, you're not going to cure them and you can't be responsible for all of their moods. So if you're always afraid of upsetting them, you'll live your life walking on eggshells. BPD is a serious disorder and even with treatment, symptoms can be difficult to manage, especially when there's stress or change. Okay, so here are things that you want to avoid doing with your BPD partner. Number one, don't try to be your therapist. If they don't go to therapy and do the work that they need to do to manage their symptoms, then there's really nothing that you can do. Number two, do not mirror or match their emotional states. When they're having an episode, their rational mind for the most part is offline. And so it's really important to keep your rational mind online. Now, I don't want to compare someone with BPD to a child, but when their symptoms are flared up, they are not operating as a fully functioning rational adult. It is not helpful to the situation if you start melting down too. So try to keep it together and consider having a support person who can help you through the more challenging episodes. Number three, never ever put the disorder on your partner's nose or use it against them. This disorder is not their fault. They didn't choose this and it's just as exhausting and frustrating for them. Don't say things like, oh, that's your BPD now coming out or act like every single problem in the relationship is happening because of your partner's BPD. And even though it seems to be, don't make them the bad guy or the villain. They already feel bad enough. And if they don't, um, you're probably not dealing with BPD. Number four, don't say things like, we'll talk when you calm down but instead say things like, let's talk when we're both feeling calm. They may shoot a bunch of insults at you, trying to keep you engaged in the drama or from leaving because in some ways you getting upset validates their internal state. Number five, when the person with BPD is dysregulated, don't try to like go into long explanations, defenses, or try to reason with them. It's not gonna work. Respect that they are not in a rational state of mind and don't tell them that they're being irrational. Number six, if they have a bad episode and require help or hospitalization, don't take this as failure on your partner's part or on your own. This will have some ups and downs. Look for progress, not perfection. Number seven, recognize when they are needing reassurance and do your best to provide some as early and as effectively as possible. Um, it's not their fault that their insecurity is overtaking them and they can't manage it on their own. So don't tell them that they're being clingy, insecure, or too much. Number eight, when they are pushing your buttons or you get the sense that they're trying to manipulate your emotions, simply ask them what they need and try to get them talking and understanding what's going on for them. Number nine, don't say things like you're being dramatic, overly sensitive. Here we go again. Um, don't do things that invalidate their feelings. To them. Number 10, don't tell them to just think better thoughts, to eat, pray, love, or stop worrying. If they could snap out of it, they would.
Lastly, uh, don't be too hard on yourself if you're having a hard time managing your own psychological state or your own behavior. If you are unraveling, contact a mental health professional in your area who can help you. If you like this video, please comment, like, subscribe, and to learn more about borderline personality disorder, click on the link above.